Hello, I'm Ash, um, and today I wanted to review two videos um, by Simon Webb of History Debunk Channel. Uh, the first of which was called um, How Being Interfered With as a Child Became a Serious Business, and the second, um, which is a follow up to that, uh, to try and explain what he meant. Um, spoiler alert uh, if you are doing a follow up, to a video which is basically an apologetic for child abuse, it's not going to go well. The thumbnail in the title of the first video um, is massively problematic because it would suggest that at some point uh, interfering with a child was not a serious business. I don't know how you get there. I, I don't know how any decent human being uh, gets there. So, uh, without further ado, we'll um, move on and see what Simon has to say for himself. Hello again. When I was a child in the 50s uh, and early 60s, there were various unpleasant experiences that sooner or later one was bound to encounter. Measles, being caned and being molested by an adult were three of the commonest of these. I don't know how we put these three things in the same sentence. Being molested by an adult, catching measles um, and being caned. I'm struggling already. At the time, few children took any of those things very seriously. They were almost like rites of passage. In the 50s and early 60s, children took these things as a rite of passage. Really? Uh, uh, God almighty, I, I am, I'm lost for words. Um, 1963 to 1965, Ian Brady and Myra Hindley were, uh, were at work. I, I, don't, I don't know how you don't get what you're saying is wrong uh, and an apologetic in any way shape or form for child abuse is just disgusting and no, I, I, no decent human being can go down this road surely the practice of what is now known as flashing was so common that i do not think i've ever met a woman who grew up at that time who did not remember some man indecently exposing himself to her when she was a schoolgirl. In the same way, every man I know of a certain age was either the recipient of unwelcome advances from an adult or knew of such a thing happening either at school or in the scouts or at church and so on. Until relatively recently, such things were generally something to be treated humorously. You find this risible? You find humour? In children being abused? What kind of monster are you? It beggars belief that you would come out with this kind of crap. Older viewers might remember Arthur Marshall, who appeared on the television panel show Call My Bluff from the 1960s to 1980s. He appeared with Frank Muir and Kenneth Williams. Arthur Marshall wrote some very funny books, including one which I have here. OK, so um, what's going to happen now is he's going to read an excerpt from Arthur Marshall's book um, where Arthur Marshall describes something that happened to him, um, a priest flashing at him, um, and he's going to suggest that it was written about in an amusing way. Um, we've gone from abuse of children to flashing very quickly and, and we seem to be or Simon seems to be uh, using uh, flashing as this is just what happens um, he seems to have moved away from the abuse of children which is uh, was was your thumbnail just clickbait was it there to get you lots of lots of clicks on the YouTubes is that what you were after Simon I'm going to skip this bit right, this is an adult indecently exposing himself to schoolboys, and Arthur Marshall thinks it's funny. 
Did he think it was funny at the time? Well, teenage schoolboys may have, uh, certainly if they didn't feel threatened. Um, I think that's a very different subject to that that you propose in your uh, in your thumbnail. Here's another passage describing the teachers at his school. Preparatory schools at the time seemed each to have its quota of unmarried masters who were still looking about for Miss Wright. Although it was difficult for them to marry on their miserable salaries, that was not, for all of them, the problem. Some of them were by nature looking about for Miss Wright rather less vigorously than others. Dedicated paedophiles stalked the linoleum-covered corridors and, sensing a non-frosty reception, pounced. No boy who wasn't actually repellent could consider himself safe from an amorous mauling among the rows of pendant Macintoshes. Well, <clears throat> this isn't a great position to be in. Are we suggesting that we want to go back to this? Are we suggesting there was nothing wrong with this? Right. Just imagine any author today describing his abuse at the hands of adults in such a funny way. Seriously, Simon, you are laughing at this. What, what do you find amusing about somebody describing child abuse? Uh, and I don't think it was necessarily described in a funny way. There was a bit of light-heartedness to it, or maybe a bit of resignation to it. Uh, that as a child, you had no power, and that power was taken away from you by an adult who was going to have their way. This, this isn't something that you should be laughing at, because this is real world, Simon. These days, of course, one would be seeking therapy or counselling to overcome all the trauma. Therapy or counselling? Would that be a bad thing? Not everybody would be seeking therapy or counselling. I can't help but feel, though, that in some ways Arthur Marshall's approach is the more healthy one. I make no secret of having been the object of such perverted affections myself in childhood, but I don't think it scarred me for life. You don't think it scarred you for life? You are currently finding something funny uh, about child abuse. I'd say it affected you in some way, Simon. One didn't really talk about such things to adults in those days. I remember more than one master at my secondary school and when I was in the Air Cadets in the 1960s were that way inclined. Uh, in the Air Cadets, two civilian instructors had to leave hastily because they were found in what might be described as compromising situations with boys. In those days, of course, there were no CRB checks and nobody liked to fuss. So men were just expected to go off and leave without making a scandal. Many of them just went off and tried their luck elsewhere in the local church choir or Boy Scout troop, for example. OK, so now what we're condoning is instead of having a scandal, let's just move them on to a new victim. Uh, and you find that acceptable? Rather than have a fuss, let's just have more victims? It sounds... <laughs> Very much like the Catholic Church, to be honest, doesn't it? This isn't a defensible position, Simon. This, this is a disgrace. I would, I would expect an educated man uh, to be a little more sensitive uh, to what, what might happen to a child, to the loss of innocence, to the feeling of helplessness potentially to the feeling that there's no one there to help you. Never mind just in the moment where you are overpowered. Piss poor, Simon. Really is. Then there was a time that I went to the cinema alone when I was 12. The guy of perhaps 30 came and sat next to me and without any preliminaries whatsoever began jacking off. My wife also has a fund of anecdotes involving... For example, a teacher at her primary school and a swimming teacher when she was a little older, around 12 or 13. It really was that common. And thank God it's probably not quite as common now. Although uh, mainstream media uh, for a long time has made us feel that it is more common than, than it was. Um, 
which has been to the detriment of of children, I believe, um, because we worry about wrapping them up in in cotton wool. But sure, you're not. Surely you're not going going to suggest that you want to go back to those halcyon days of regular, casual child abuse. Now, I don't think it's necessary for me to remark that I thoroughly disapprove of the molestation of children. Well, I would hope it wouldn't be necessary to remark that. However, I'm getting the kind of vibe you get when somebody says, I'm not a racist, but... But I'm not sure how wise it is to make too much fuss about it, as a child concerned. There's a lot of evidence to suggest that the act itself is often less damaging to the child than the consequences which ensue when they tell others about it. Many children simply take such things in their stride, and it's only when adults around them start fainting or ringing the police that they start to get seriously worried themselves about what has happened. For me, these were just minor incidents in my childhood and adolescence, but perhaps if they had escalated to police involvement or giving evidence in court, then they might have seen more significance and affected me more deeply, perhaps even causing me scars. So, <coughs> amazing. Uh, Simon believes that uh, should you be a victim of child molestation, the best thing to do is just to carry on, stiff up a lip, try not to get a, get too bent out of shape about it. Is that your position, Simon? Well, that was the end of the first video, and that's where he left it. Uh, and I think to present uh, a video like that and leave it there, uh, and and to have a, what context you would put around this, God knows. Um, I think I think that was poor. I don't think Simon knows it was poor as well because he did a follow-up video. But always good when you've, you know, presented your excuses for child abuse to carry on and keep digging that hole. Let's see what Simon says next. Hello again. I seem to have inadvertently irritated one or two people with a video I released yesterday on the subject of children and their encounters with perverts, such as flashers. We're minimising this straight away, aren't we? This is what you did within the first video, was that you took child molestation down to flashes. Pervert, flashes. You're trying to minimise... Uh, you're trying to minimise the, the fact that some, some male adult took sexual gratification in exposing himself to a child. How, how are you making excuses for this? One person in a comment today claims that I was condoning child sexual abuse and has taken it upon himself to provide a trigger warning for yesterday's video. I'll be honest, Simon, I can understand why some people would feel like that. Um, Condoning child abuse? Maybe not. Minimising it? Definitely. This is a small illustration of what bloody fools there are in the world. The piece yesterday was very short and I suppose that it is possible that some people genuinely did think that I was condoning the abuse of children. Although when I said that I thoroughly disapproved of the molestation of children... That might have indicated otherwise to anybody with a couple of ears and a brain. Oh, OK, so... Um, again, this is the I'm not racist but line. What we're going to get now is the Emperor's New Clothes. This is, uh, you know, you didn't see what you just saw. <laughs> uh, wh why are you trying to defend your position at this point? Uh, is beyond me. Um, we heard what you said. You minimised the impact that it has on a lot of children uh, being abused by an adult. You took it down to its 
maybe least serious offence where a child isn't physically touched but that doesn't mean that the child is not affected by what happened but still let us be charitable and assume that some of those watching really didn't get the point I was making let me try again I might mention to begin with <clears throat> that this is a subject about which I've written for various newspapers and magazines because I had at one time a professional interest in it. In the description to this video I give a link to a piece I wrote for the Times Educational Supplement about child sexual abuse 20 years ago. In some ways of course the situation relating to child sexual abuse in this country has improved immeasurably in the last 50 years. In other ways, though, things are worse than they used to be. I will explain what I mean in a minute, but first let me say that there is a subject where humour may be found. It is child sexual abuse, or what is sometimes classified as child sexual abuse, and it can be funny. Let me... Uh, by the way, several people yesterday denied vehemently that that could possibly be so. Is there is there a way that that um, that paedophilia could be worked into comedy? Yes, uh, somebody like Jimmy Carl would do this very well, um, uh, and it's the shock effect that you would get to have a, to to. Uh, elicit a laugh reaction um, and Jimmy Carr could do this and he'd do it quite well he probably set, set a line up that was something misogynistic about his girlfriend and then say something like well she can't be expected to be to understand yet because she's only 15 or she couldn't afford that because her pocket money doesn't run to it she's only 15 and that shock where somebody thinks they're being set up for one joke and then they're shocked into the other elicits a laugh reaction. Could you do that? Yes, you could. Um, you obviously go to a Jimmy Carr concert knowing what kind of thing you're going to get. <clears throat> um, and you're not talking about a specific. You're not talking about an actual case of child sexual abuse. So, uh, um, uh, can comedy be found in this subject yes it can do we generally think that child sexual abuse is funny well well decent human beings don't know simon that decent human beings don't laugh about it in the way you are it's just not that funny one person said that drink driving was tolerated at about the same time but that we now know that this is also wicked and wrong, and I wouldn't say that drink driving was funny, would I? Actually, of course, that too is funny in a grim kind of way, the same way that the uh, minor sexual abuse of children can be seen in a humorous light. I find, for example, something exquisitely funny about the concept of pub car parks. Have you never laughed at this idea? at the very expression. Why do people visit the pub? To imbibe alcoholic drinks. Why do pubs have car parks? So that those wishing to drink alcohol can drive to the pub, drink alcohol and then drive home again. In other words, despite our horror at the very idea of drink driving, we have always accepted freely that it goes on and been happy with the idea of pub car parks which are, of course, specifically built to facilitate drink driving. No, Simon, they are not. When I started driving some 35 years ago, um, me and my friends would go out for a drink. One of us would drive. We would be what was known as the designated driver in an Americanism, a good thing that was brought over from America. And the designated driver would be the person that drank orange juice or Coca-Cola all night and ferried his friends around. And then the week after, then somebody else would be the designated driver. So, no, 
no hilarity in a pub car park. Pubs also serve food. There are also places to socialise. Uh, people will go out with families. And somebody will either have a drink that keeps them below the legal limit, or they will not drink at all. Bit of a shitty straw man argument, that one, Simon. It really is. This is probably the first time that viewers will ever have heard this pointed out because our hypocrisy usually prevents us from speaking openly of the matter. Or we were all more intelligent to think that pub car parks were only being used by drink drivers. Absolute twaddle. Seriously, pub car parks? Nobody else find that funny? In the same way, humour, admittedly black humour, may be found in such things as indecent exposure to children. An instance of this may be found in the course of this book. OK, so um, Simon's going to go on to talk about the pride of Miss Jean Brodie here. I'm going to clip this bit out because you can go and watch his video if you want to watch him tap dance like Fred Astaire uh, to try and justify his, his point of view. You're not going to get me to agree with you yet, Simon. You've said nothing of import. I hope viewers have patience because I'm approaching an important point here. I was reproached yesterday for making a short and easily misunderstood video about such a serious subject. And so now I feel a duty bound to go into it in a little detail. Now, it might be objected that the private Miss Jean Brodie is fiction and that in real life such events are traumatic and necessitate counselling and therapy in later life. Allow me to relate a true incident which I witnessed a little over half a century ago. So, uh, this is interesting because this is a true incident which Simon witnessed. Put yourself in Simon's position and just tell me what you would do, because I know what I would have done. It involves indecent exposure to children, and I defy even the most po-faced viewer not to smile. Valentine's Park in Ilford, that's in East London, was once uh, famous for the number of middle-aged men who would lurk in the bushes there. There was a girls' school next to it, Ilford County High for Girls, and from a secluded area of shrubbery, it was possible to observe the girls on the playing field, if your interest ran in that direction. It was also possible at lunchtime for men to expose themselves to children through the railings. A perfect location for middle-aged perverts, in fact. I was walking through the park one day when school had just ended and the girls were going home, some of them through the park, and I was behind a group of half a dozen girls aged about 12, 13, 14 maybe. Two girls of about the same age approached from the opposite direction and said excitedly, pointing towards some bushes, that man just showed us his willy. Okay. So, you're walking home, girls' school, and two girls run over and say, that man just show, showed us his willy. What happens next? So I know, 20 years ago, when I was 35, I could have covered the distance to that person in probably about eight seconds from a standing start. He's going to start to run, but I'm going to catch him. Because he's a pervert. I'm going to catch him. And I'm going to put him under a citizen's arrest. And I'm going to have him arrested by the police. They seem more intrigued and amused than anything. I could just catch a glimpse of the fellow about 25, 30 yards away, partly hidden by the bushes. The group of girls in front of me then showed enormous interest and um, started behaving in a very foolish manner, saying things like, oh, I want to see as well. After a bit more laughter and mucking about, they began running towards the flasher, laughing and shouting things along the lines of, can I see it as well, mister? The man panicked and took flight, pursued through the undergrowth by six or seven spirited schoolgirls. 
This was one of the funniest things I've ever seen in my life, like a real life scene from Benny Hill. More like St Trinian's. Um, is the scene itself amusing? Potentially. Would the scene ever have happened if that had been me? If I had been in Simon's position, would that scene have happened? No, it wouldn't, because I would have been after the guy. I would not have stood back and said, I'm going to watch these young girls run after a pervert who's been exposing himself. I'm not that kind of human being. Simon apparently is. This brings me to one of the ways in which the current attitude to child sexual abuse is less healthy than it once was. In 2009, the NSPCC reported that 24.1%, almost a quarter of children in Britain, had been sexually abused. This was an astonishing suggestion. In the description to this video, I give a link to, to a news item from last year, which claims in the headline that around one in seven girls in England and Wales sexually abused before the age of 16, report finds. Even this sounds implausible. Reading the fine print reveals that by child sexual abuse is meant contact abuse in all forms, including acts by those under 18, as well as indecent exposure. In other words, these days, if a 15-year-old boy and girl snog and touch each other, this is listed as child sexual abuse. OK, just stop now. Because, again, you are trying to minimise, and I don't know why, child sexual abuse. We get that there are categories of it. As far as I understand, the police and the CPS would have some kind of... Uh, leeway with how they would move forward with two consenting children exploring their sexuality and it's a sticky subject it's a difficult thing because we have an age of consent and, and you could not actually have two children that consented to a sex act of, of whatever description however you are now trying to say oh well it can't Child sex abuse can't be that important because actually they're talking about kids playing with each other. No, they're not. That's not what we're talking about. Again, why why would you go down this this uh, rather sickening route uh, of justifying or trying to rationalise child sex abuse? If a man exposes himself to a girl of 15... This too is counted as child sexual abuse. This is a most dangerous way of proceeding, and a very modern one too. Well, I'm terribly sorry that it's something modern or progressive. I'm sure that's a word that triggers you, Simon. A dangerous way of proceeding? As I said earlier, a flasher who flashes at children is a man who is getting sexual gratification by exposing himself to a child. It, it, how? Where? How do you justify it? I, I can't. I don't know people that can. I, I don't want to know people that can, to be quite honest. It means that genuine abuse, such as the rape of a child by an adult, is now lumped together with a girl who has been flashed at. The two offences could hardly be more different, but in the modern world they are treated for official purposes as being in some way equivalent. This is terrible, and it trivialises genuine abuse. Both of these things are genuine abuse. You cannot, Simon, uh, understand whether every child will react the same. Uh, a group of children who get flashed at might find that funny because they don't, don't feel threatened. However, a single child who is walking home from school alone 
being flashed at or being approached by somebody that exposes themselves, how are they going to feel? Because all of a sudden the big person is in front of them. Fear, distress and alarm is, is what that person is going to feel. Helplessness. But you're going to trivialise it. I shall end this video, which focused on one aspect of what I talked of yesterday, with another personal anecdote. When my daughter was six, she went to the little playground at the end of our street with her mother while I stayed at home. While they were there, my daughter drew my wife's attention to a man standing just outside the railings by saying, Oh, look, Mummy. My wife saw that a man was exposing himself. Because she is a social worker and knew how to deal with such things, she ignored the man and just said to my daughter that it was time to be getting back. That's not what I want my social workers to do, or my children's social workers to do. Ignore somebody exposing themselves to children at a park. No. As a minimum, that's a dereliction of duty. She has a duty of care. She ignored it. Only when she got home did she tell me privately what had happened. My daughter was completely unaware that she had supposedly been a victim of child sexual abuse and the incident passed wholly unremarked. It would have been very different though had my wife screamed and then come home and rung the police. Then this trivial matter might well have become something scary and alarming to a six-year-old child. She might well have been traumatised. She might even subconsciously have started to link the sight of a man's penis with adults being upset and hysterical. And the person exposing themselves to children may have been caught. I, I find it hard to believe, as a father, uh, of two daughters and two sons that you are not more moved by this that you don't see the seriousness seriousness of this sign how do you not see it that's not healthy in other words it is often the reaction of other adults which determines how much effect such an incident has upon a child rather than the incident itself I must confess that after my wife described the man, I um, fetched the claw hammer from my toolbox and popped out casually to see if I could find the man and remonstrate with him. But this was done without mentioning it to either my wife or daughter, so no trauma was created there either. Really? <laughs> so your entire argument has just been blown out of the water, Simon? You found this offence so serious that you took a claw hammer and you went out to remonstrate with the gentleman. But what form would that remonstration take? With a claw hammer. Because I tell you now, if you swing a claw hammer at someone, there's a very good chance that you kill them. What, you were taking it for self-defence? What if he went to attack you and you had to defend yourself? You've gone prepared premeditated with a claw hammer you're willing to commit murder for this crime for, for the offence of somebody exposing themselves to your daughter but you don't think it's important when it's somebody else I think we've actually got we've probably got to the, the nub of the, the issue haven't we Simon which is that unless it directly affects you and your family you're not interested this is piss poor, Simon. You're willing to kill somebody for something that you have said is trivial because that person wasn't in your orbit. Those children weren't in your orbit. Not caring, is it? I can see this video is quite long enough and I'll have to make a separate one in the future to cover the other topics which caused so much annoyance yesterday. 
I shall too have to find some more of my articles on this. Uh, some of them appeared in academic journals many years ago and they are therefore not easily accessible on the internet. Well, goodness, I, I can't wait to watch you tap dance your way around your excuse for condoning, trivialising child sex abuse. Superb piece of work, Simon. Probably just as well that your writings are not being quoted in academic journals anymore. Probably best if you just go a little quiet on this subject. Now, it's interesting, last time I did a video on Simon, uh, his, um, his fan club came to his rescue. Uh, they said things like, uh, he would eat you for dinner. Nah. Yeah. Yeah. This is indefensible. Uh, this little body of work that he's put out is disgraceful. People aren't annoyed. They're not irritated. They're disgusted because they can see what you just did. And you see what you did. You went out with a claw hammer to attack somebody that exposed themselves to your daughter. However, for the rest of society, we're just making a fuss. Yeah. Piss poor Simon. Uh, thank you for watching. Um, <laughs> if you think you can defend Simon, my God, what kind of human being would you be if you think you can defend any of this? This is just <laughs> the most vile apologetic for child abuse that I have I've ever seen awful thank you for watching I'll be back take care of each other